vast oceans, marine deserts. No one has truly understood what lies beneath the surface of the waters that surround Los Santos and Blaine County. Until now. This short film will reveal the animals and plant life that live in these waters. From the southern oceans, to the northern seas. Come on a journey into the deep. In order for us to explore these mysterious waters, we will need the very latest submersible. This is Theodore, a submarine with walls six and a half inches thick and a seven inch thick acrylic sphere, which will enable it to dive to a maximum depth of 500 feet. Theodore is also equipped with the most up-to-date high-definition cameras, which will enable our pilot and cameraman to observe anything that is discovered beneath the depths in the utmost detail. Our journey begins in the Southern Ocean, and the water is incredibly dark. The submarine is equipped with highly powerful spotlights, which illuminates anything within a radius of 30 feet in all directions. On close inspection, the water appears to be filled with harmful bacteria. It's difficult to be sure, but there are rumours that suggest that the port of South Los Santos is strategically dumping harmful bacteria into the ocean and is thus causing all animal life to migrate to other areas. These are, however, merely rumours, but there is solid evidence that proves that man is filling these waters up with unwanted objects. It's hard to determine what this particular item is, however, there are vastly more recognisable structures. This is a cargo plane with a wingspan of 18 metres. It would seem that the Los Santos International Airport, when it has no further use for such a plane, will simply discard it into the ocean. The sheer bulk of this plane has caused irreparable damage to the coral reef which lies beneath. However, all is not lost. In given time, the coral and algae which thrived will latch on to the bulk of this colossal aircraft and the cargo plane itself will become the foundation of a brand new coral reef. As we travel further into the depths, a strange noise emanates from the gloom. The owners of this noise are about to reveal themselves. Killer whales. These whales are huge, over 7 metres in length and weighing just under 9 tonnes. They're looking for food, but they won't find any here. If these whales are to find sufficient food, they will need to continue their travels into the vastness of the open ocean. If they're lucky, they will come across a school of mackerel, but for the meantime, they will have to starve. We are now travelling down the western coast, and kelp plants are in abundance. These kelp plants will provide a safe haven for small fish. The females will be able to lay their eggs on the leaves, and the males will be able to fertilise them in relative safety. As we travel further still, we discover a number of kelp plants are completely isolated in the surface waters, and yet they are still flourishing. How can this be? The main source of nutriment for a kelp plant is in the base, where all of the minerals and starches are collected. The answer lies beneath. The base of the kelp plant is so large that in fact it collects more than enough nutriment than it actually requires. 
As a result, the top of the kelp plant breaks off and is then able to float to the surface. With its stems and leaves packed with minerals and nutrients, and with the added power of the sun, it is then able to completely independently photosynthesize and therefore can flourish in the surface waters. As we return to the surface, a giant homes into view. A male humpback whale. These whales are gigantic. They can grow over 16 meters in length and weigh just under 40 tons. Despite its enormous size, this whale has not eaten for over five months. He's living solely off of his fat reserves, which he accumulated in the Arctic waters of the North Polar region and he's near starvation. He's currently following a traditional migratory route which will take him to the breeding grounds of the North Seas. Once he is mated, then and only then will he make the four and a half thousand mile trip back to the Arctic waters in order to feed. We have now entered the Northern Seas. We've been here for less than three minutes and already we've attracted unwanted attention. tiger shark. These sharks are extremely territorial and they are known man-eaters. They are however incredibly inquisitive. Before attacking their prey they will first investigate by butting into it with their highly sensitive nose. The submersible however was not what this shark was looking for and so after a 20 minute pursuit, it eventually gave up the chase. When one shark disappears, more arrive. Hammerhead sharks. And in great numbers. Scientists have only recorded hammerheads to be together in such large groups when a feeding frenzy is about to take place. The evidence suggests, however, that a feeding frenzy is not going to occur. So why these hammerhead sharks are together in such large numbers without the prospect of food is a mystery. However, the fact that they are is a very rare sight indeed. Eventually, these sharks will soon disperse and will once again become lone wanderers of the open ocean. We are now entering the final part of our journey. The waters of the eastern coast. But as we cross the border from the northern seas into these waters, an excitable commotion can be heard in the distance. It's a pod of killer whales. These whales have returned from a squid hunting trip around 400 meters below. Their bellies full, they return to the surface and begin to strengthen their social bonds. This hunting trip, however, was not a complete success. A young calf has gotten badly injured. And its mother has noticed. The mother is desperate for the calf to rejoin the pod. She calls to the calf affectionately as if to give it motivation. But to no avail. As an act of desperation, she prods the calf in its flank to give it one last motivational push. 
this sadly has not worked either. One theory as to how this youngster succumbed to its injuries is that for the first time it was learning the complicated hunting techniques to catch squid at such depths and had thus become a victim of collateral damage. This youngster has just enough energy to keep its head above water in order to breathe. But with its health levels rapidly diminishing, tragically, this calf will not survive. We are now in the middle of the eastern coast and we are about to witness the largest group of animals in all of these waters. Bottlenose Dolphin These dolphins are agile, highly sociable and extremely intelligent. These dolphins, however, are not alone. A shark has been following the pod for the last 20 miles. Sharks become very excited when dolphins are around. This is because they have learnt the feeding habits that the dolphins have adapted to. The dolphins will dive down into the depths and bring up with them a huge shoal of fish. This, in return, makes it easier for the shark to feed. This combination of animals may seem bizarre to us, but this is a partnership that has been forged over millions of years of evolution. We are at the very end of our journey, and something very bizarre lies on the sea floor. These are the skeletal remains of what can only be described as a prehistoric sea monster. The head is the size of a small family car. The ribcage is big enough to engulf the submersible with a couple of inches to spare. The spine is over 20 meters long. Scientists have estimated that this creature would have grown to a length of up to 40 meters and would have weighed over 85 tons. No one is truly sure. However, one thing is for certain. On our journey of the waters that surround Los Santos and Blaine County, we have explored less than 15% of them. If this is at the bottom of the sea floor on the eastern coast, who knows what else is out there?